Welcome to Lecture Online, and today we're going to introduce you to a new topic in calculus called max min problems. And max min problems, as far as I remember when I was a student, those were fairly difficult. And we can take the mystery out of these if we do them in a very particular way. If we go through a very special set of steps, a special set of steps, I shouldn't say special, but if we go through a particular set of steps, these problems aren't as difficult as they may appear. So, with some examples, I'm going to try and show you how to go about solving a max min problem using calculus. So here our example is that we're supposed to maximize the volume of an open box. We are given a piece of cardboard that has a length and a width. And we're supposed to cut out the corners. They're supposed to be square corners. And so we can then fold up the lid, uh, fold up the lids, what's left, and then have a box. And so, whenever we solve a maximum problem, the first thing I always want to do is try to determine what's supposed to maximize or minimize. In this case, it's very clear. They tell us we're supposed to maximize the volume. So, that's easy. Volume needs to be maximized. That's what we're looking for. Maximum volume. So, the second thing we want to do is come up with an equation that describes the volume of that box. So, in this case, we're supposed to come up with an equation that describes what we're supposed to maximize, which is the volume. And so volume equals uh, the length times the width times the height. So I'll just write this down. So volume of a rectangular box is the length times the width times the height. All right, so now we have determined what the length, the width, and the height is. So the length of the cardboard is L, but the length of the box will be L minus 2x when the cutouts are cut out. So we have V equals length minus 2x, that's the length of the box. The width of the box will be the width of the cardboard minus the 2x, so that would be width minus 2x. And then the height will be, well, once we cut those ends, once, once we cut the corners out and we fold up the ends, then the height would be equal to the size of the cutout, x. So now that we have an equation, um, we have L, X, and W all in the same equation. Of course, we only want a single variable. So now we look for some constraints to let us know what the relationship between these variables are or how to eliminate some of the variables. In this case, we're given the length and the width in terms of inches, and these are considered, in this problem, our constraints. So then when we plug the constraints into our equation, we can eliminate as many of the variables as possible, and hopefully we'll just end up with one. Let's see what happens. So we have the volume is equal to the length, which in this case is 30 minus 2x times the width, which in this case is 15 minus 2x times the height x. All right, so now we have an equation for the volume with only one variable in it, and that's what we want to do. So now we're going to simplify this equation a little bit by multiplying everything out. So we have v equals Let's see, uh, 30 times 15, that's 450. Uh, 30 times minus 2x is minus 60x. 2x times 50 is minus 30x, that would be minus 90x. And then this times this, that would be plus 4x squared times x. All right, and I'm multiplying that x through here and maybe rearrange the equation a little bit. The volume is equal to 4x cubed minus 90x squared um, plus 450 x. All right, so now, let's see here, we have, let's call this step three. So step one was determining what we're trying to maximize. Step two was coming up with an equation. And then step three um, is coming up with the constraints that allow us to simplify the equation so we only have one variable, one independent variable in the equation. All right, next thing we want to do is take the derivative of that equation. So step four, v prime is equal to question mark. So what's the derivative of this? Well, v prime is equal to 12x squared minus 180x. Oop, I'm forgetting zero here. Minus 180x. And then finally, when I take derivative of that, that would be plus 450. All right, that was step four. Step five, we're now going to set the derivative equal to zero. So step five, set v prime equal to zero. So zero is equal to 12x squared minus 180x plus 450. And why do we do that? Well, we know that where the derivative is equal to zero, the slope of the equation will be equal to zero. And of course, where we have a maximum or minimum of any particular item, that is where the slope will be zero. 
So when we now solve for the variable, so in this case solve for x, we should find the value for x that will make the box the maximum volume, or give the box the maximum volume. So solving this for x, so we have 0 is equal to 12x squared minus 180x plus 450. Well, let's see here. We can divide everything by 2. So 0 is equal to 6x squared minus 90x plus 225. Uh, looks like we can divide everything by 3. So 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 30x and plus, that would be 75. All right, I think that's as far as I can simplify that. Now to find x, I'm going to have to use the quadratic equation. So x is equal to minus b, which is 30, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 900, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 75, and divide the whole thing by 2 times a, which would be 4. All right, now I need my calculator. Let's see what we get. So we have uh, 4 times 2, that's 8 times 75, that's 600, and subtract that from 900. All right, so that x is equal to 30 plus or minus the square root of 900 minus 600, which is 300, divided by 4. Okay, take the square root of that, we get 17.32, so that's equal to 30 plus or minus 17.32 divided by 4. All right, let's first add it together and see what we get. So we have plus 30 equals and divided by 4 equals, that's 11.8. So that means x equals 11.8. And now if I subtract 17.32 from 30, 30 minus 17.32 and divide that by 4, I get 3.17 x equals 3.17. So, two mathematically possible answers, but are they realistic answers? Let's take the first one, x equals 11.8. If I let x equals 11.8, well, this is 11.8 then, and this 11.8 together is more than 20 inches, and since the width is only 15, there's no way it can cut out that big a piece and still have any cardboard left. So, that's not a plausible answer. So, what about the second answer, 3.17? That seems plausible because 3.17 plus 3.17 is definitely less than 15. So it looks like this is the answer. And that means that as long as we make x equal 3.17 inches, we have a box with the maximum value. And that's how you do a problem like that. Okay, let me come up with a few more examples so you can see how these are done. 